Well, our next presenter um, is, from what I understand, talking to you, her main market has been Hispanic. Uh, when she started in, in the business, and, um, and she's been super successful. And I think a lot of that, too, is the fact that uh, uh, something Isaac didn't mention is that, uh, and it's been my experience also, is if you're a Latino, there are so many opportunities to get on different boards. I mean, every organization is looking for Latinos to be on their board. And take it from me, that's where I got my start. I didn't go to college, but yet I was chair of the St. Paul Chamber of Commerce. I was on the Metropolitan Council. I was in many organizations in some leadership roles. I got my start by joining these organizations, the Girl Scouts, uh, the Red Cross Board of Directors. I was heading up these diversity committees. If you're in this room here and you're thinking about, what's another thing I can do for my career? Take that one to the bank. The Twin Cities, the biggest, the biggest hangout in the Twin Cities are all the volunteer groups. And you're going to meet these people, you're going to be on those boards with these people, and they're going to appreciate you being there. Then you're going to be active on those boards. Because I was active. If I got on a board, somebody put me, I'm going to work hard. Those are the stepping tones in, th in this town. It's 100%, you're going to get 100% success rate with that. So I'm going to have EJ come up right now, and um, how about a hand for her? She's got back from D.C. Thank you, thank you. Um, this is Guille Garza. I'm a real estate agent with Keller Williams and also the past president and founder of the NAREP, the National Association Hispanic of Real Estate Professionals. Um, here, Ed Luna was one of the ones who invited me to start this initiative here in, in the Twin Cities, which is great because we didn't have it. As soon as I realized and I looked the mission of NAREP, that was catch up my attention. Um, I've been in the business for nine years, this is my ninth year, and I see a lot of misinformation. As a Latino, working with the Latino community, I see, okay, what we want to do, how we are doing business, and who we are relating to. And, and it's difficult, because even me, then probably uh, my English is not the greatest, but I know how to read, I know how to write. That was kind of hard, right? When I purchased my first home, I didn't even went to the inspection. Why? I don't know. Nobody told me. Mm -hmm. So I paid for the inspection. I never went. And sooner or later, we ended up doing a lot of stuff in the home because we didn't see the inspection. We didn't ask questions. And believe it or not, we went to an American guy. So it's not his fault. It just then probably I wasn't prepared for purchase a home. So um, for many years I was working in the IT uh, department in education. But you know the schools. We need people who knows and is available to do many things for one job. So we, we are translators. We are helping kids uh, taking the test. We are helping everybody who speaks Spanish. And because you ended up in a place where you are the only one who speaks Spanish, and guess what? You have a long list to do and be willing to do because that's what we do, helping people. So when I started, I sooner or later, I was helping people to see documents, then how they purchase properties. And I was like, this is, doesn't sound right for me, even though I didn't know the business. I didn't know anything about real estate, but I just the logic thing doesn't sound right. And when I ask people, how do you write a check for 30,000 to this person? I don't know. I said, okay. So what is this? What is the alta? What is the, the estimated? And I was trying and being more and more um, attraction for real estate. Sooner or later, long story, I have to quit my job. I have to put in a stop to be more with my two girls. And, and I said, okay, I, I'm, I can do, I can be at home doing nothing. 
or just cooking and cleaning and slamming. So I said, okay, what, what I can do? I start looking in the internet, I, st I still helping people, but I realized then, like many other people say, I'm gonna flip homes and I'm gonna sell and I'm gonna be an investor and there we go. But it's not that easy. It's not like that. When I start reading and reading, and I say, okay, the first steps, I need to get the license. I went, take classes, three courses, 30 hours ish. Sounds good, right? Easy, not too much time. I can do it. So I went to take the classes, I get the license, and then I realized that I have to be under a broker. And I'm like, here we go. Okay, what is happening to me? It is like I'm going step by step when I'm looking the big picture. So I have to go one by one by one. Sooner or later, I say, okay, if I wanna pay all those fees, I better work for this, right? So at least I can do one home, two homes, and then I can pay the fees. That wasn't like that either, right? <laughs> Again, so in the end, I start practicing real estate. And I say, okay, I wanna do this, I'm gonna help a couple people, but as soon as I start meeting with people, what is happening? Miscommunication, misinformation, people don't even, even know what they sign in. And, and then I realized being only one year in the business then wasn't the right way. Not everybody was wrong, but not everybody was doing the right thing. Um, then I said, okay, has to be something else. You know, the broker was my ceiling. I was, okay, this is my broker. They need to know everything and I'm here. But no, there is more. There is association, and then it's the state level, it is the national level, and then it is governmental affairs where you can make changes. So when I start looking at that information, I say, okay, I'm gonna be one of those committees. I start asking people, nobody put attention to me. <laughs> I mean like, oh, Latina doing business, she wants to do the real estate, and I'm like, okay, I never, I don't like to brag or say, hey, I'm an engineer in computer science. I mean, I know what I'm talking about, and I know what I'm doing. Somebody told me, uh, and I appreciate a lot, I said, Guille, you need to learn how to sell yourself better. And I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, I'm selling? I am not selling myself. I say, no, 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 no. Let's do this. I mean, you wanna get into and help people in the Latino business, it's a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. And I've been in those shoes, and believe me, it's not easy. But come on, so she helps me. And I say, every single time that you go to talk to people, because the Latino community, we still seem like a small percent. And we are not. We are looking at the statistics. We're growing and growing and growing, and a lot of people just don't realize yet how big we are. But going back, and I say, okay, let's do this. I want to know where people, is, where people is making the changes, who is sitting there, how we can help better the community, and how these people who make the laws or who, is, who has the power to change things can help us. We went to the association, SPAR, MAR, Minnesota Realtors. What I can say right now, as soon as I put in a step there, I didn't see any Latinos, any African Americans, any Caucasian, I mean any uh, Asian. And I said, that's why we don't have a voice and we need to work for that voice. It is great when you see the numbers and I say, oh, so-and-so, the high producer in the Latino community, great. What she's doing and what he's doing to bring him back to the Latino community. In that point, I was asking more and more, little by little, and it is so hard to feel in a group of people and don't be able to raise your hand because you are afraid, because you don't know if people are gonna say, excuse me, can you repeat that? And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I wanna do it again. And, and I did, right? Because if you don't understand me, fine, I wanna, Say it again, or even better, why you don't speak Spanish, right? <laughs> but no, 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 
I, I didn't say that. <laughs> but the thing is, we have to help us ourselves. We have to go there. We have to be, uh, as soon as I hear about NAREP, right now, I can be so proud and say every single board member is part of those committees. DEI committee, governmental affairs, professional standard, I mean forums, all of those committees, the National Association of Hispanic of Real Estate Professionals, and here in the Twin Cities, we are part of that, yeah. right? Yeah. Why? Because the story, let's go back to the community. Remember, when people came to you, I started nine years ago. I started with people probably that don't speak English, and they just bring it to you, all the information, and say, here, you, you read it. You tell me what to do. Trust, initially. They trust you. I mean, how can I not do my job in the 100% ethical if that person who is putting all his faith on me, how can I not do it professional, ethical? Just because a commission is bigger or higher or lowest? I mean, no, it is a job. And I think that's the missing piece here than how NAREP is trying to educate the professionals. <coughs> educate the professionals. I mean, if you're selling, I don't care if you went to the college or not, but if you are a real estate agent, you already pass for those courses. You already take the ethical professional standards that every single year we took the class. And you're telling me that you are not working for the community? It's like, really. But um, we have generational people right now. We, I start uh, working with, uh, with community, or the Latino community, that doesn't speak English at all. But those kids were 10 years, 12 years, 14 years old. And now, guess what? That's my second generation. Right now, I feel so proud to say uh, I'm helping those kids, they are 22, 23, because they listening to me when I help the, those parents to say, we have to, you, you're going to be available to buy a house, but I don't know how. Let's build credit. What is that? In our countries, probably, we don't need that, right? But the information that we pass to the clients, we need to know, we need education. 100%, I've been repeating this in the first day of my real estate agent. We have to educate people. We have to put the information available for everybody. I mean, right now, talking about marketing, like Isaac say, and that still happens. I mean, we have the budget. We wanna put 30% for Latinos, 30%, and I'm like, hey, hey, hey. No, we are a full community, and if you wanna, catch up that community, start investing, and have your website in Spanish, totally. I mean, I don't wanna look for, oh, Espanol, Ingles. No, have it in Spanish already, because that's the community who is looking for. Talking to generational customers, you helping people who doesn't speak English, but now we have their kids who are bilingual. A lot of people who is uh, interacting with the Latino community, or some of them say, oh, I don't need a Latino Spanish speaker uh, agent or loan officer. But guess what? Mom, uncle, grandpa is behind them. Say, oh, no, 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 no. You're going to go with the Latino agent, the Latino loan officer, because I'm going to be there, and I'm going to help you, right? We're still listening to our parents. I mean. It is so nice when you text those kids, I say kids, but they are older. I say, you text them in Spanish and they respond in English. And I'm like, okay, okay, what can I do? In Spanish or English, but when mom is in those texts, everything is in Spanish. And that's so awesome because now 
probably they don't need me to speak Spanish. Probably they can go to another real estate agent then speak uh, uh, only English. Some of them went to college and they have friends who are agents right now. And they say, oh, Guille, I know so-and-so, but my mom want me to go with you. <laughs> like, okay, good for your mom. <laughs> but I can buy a coffee next time. So the thing is, we are in this business multi-generational right now. And it's awesome. Because for me, then I prefer definitely speak Spanish and be able to talk in Spanish all the time. It is so nice to see how the community is reacting. But still, we, need, we have a lot of work to do. We need to improve the education. Right now, I was just talking to here, Hugo, from uh, the lending side, and he was saying, Guille, what about the, the educational classes? And I say, great, a lot of people is doing it, right? But what is the right thing to do when you are a first-time home buyer and you need um, the certificate for those classes? We need to tell people the truth. Hey, I'm giving an informational session about first-time home buyers, but I'm not going to give you a certificate, but I have all the information. So a lot of information that we put in outside, we have to be honest with the people. We have to tell them where to go. We need to tell them where to look the information. Right now, believe me, uh, just yesterday, I was in a forum for governmental affairs in Minnesota Association of Realtors. You know, governmental affairs, they are dedicated to see the changes, how we can help better the community, and they were putting all this that beautiful statistics about investors, um, homeowners, and different areas. One of the things, and I always have to ask something, even if they understand me or not, I don't care. I just always raise my hand and say something. So I say, you, do you know that every person can purchase a home in, here in Minnesota, I don't know the other states, in Minnesota, Buying with ITIN, we cannot be homestead homeowners. And they were like, what, 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 what is that? What is that number? What did you say? And it was a lot of questions. And that room was like a library, walking library. 30 years of, in the business, 40, 38, 25. So it was a lot of people with a lot of knowledge. And they didn't know about the ITIN number. And I was like, Okay, here we go again. Let's explain. Let's talk about it. If you guys want to work with the Latino community, it's not just the culture. We have to understand what is, what, how we operate, how we are being able to purchase a home. A lot of people is with IT, social security number. We have, I don't know how many types of visas, maybe Quentin or John Ed, Ed, that they are loan officers, they can tell you, but there is too many different um, types of visa that you can purchase a home. A lot of people don't know this, right? So talking about marketing and how you wanna move to work with the Latino community is not just the culture, and you say, I like tacos, I mean. <laughs> I'm tired of those prices all the time Then I go to meetings. I like tacos. I, I ate spicy. And I'm like, thank you. you you're awesome. I said, but it, we are more than that. We are more than tacos, and I like cerveza, right? Eight girls for Asian. Eight girls for Asian. El baño. Yes. But, um, thinking about that, it, it is funny and it is okay, right? But being more serious, we are more than that. Being serious, you need to know the culture. You need to understand that even if I'm from Latin America, not everybody is Mexican. Not everybody is speak Mexican. They said, right. you speak Mexican. But, I mean, those kind of things, it is like we have to be aware like we have different cultures. I work a lot with, um, not just uh, from Mexico, 
from mm -hmm. other um, countries. And sometimes I don't know if I understand Spanish. I mean, I have to repeat myself and I say, okay, what is the best way to communicate? What is the best way to make them understand all these forums that we don't have in Spanish? We are not translators, we are communicators. We try to make them understand all the legal process. And it's hard, it is so hard because it's our liability, how we operate and how we transmit all this information. And, and honestly, it is how much information I give to the client. Probably sometimes I can say, I'm gonna make you understand this, but not this. And I wanna show you this, but not this. So we have to be transparent in our business. That's why, in my opinion, it's so important that every agent take seriously how we help the community. Now, um, talking about the I team, this in this group, talking about people who is 30 years, even 40 years in the business, and they didn't know about the I team, that told me something. They will still need a lot of work to do. And um, short story, I was in a transaction. I was the listing agent, and I have a, a Caucasian lady working with a Latino customer. Sooner or later, one week before closing, she was trying to say, I don't know what's going on, uh, something is wrong, and I was trying to go, they say, okay, I call the agent and I say, what is the problem? Why we cannot close? Can you explain me a little bit? And she say, you know what, I'm sorry, but we cannot verify the information. And I say, okay, can you be more explicit? I don't know how to tell you this. And I'm like, okay, that's okay, but just let's try it. End of the story, that client was an IT. I, I don't know, I don't have any idea how they did the approval, but she cannot have the loan, right? Two things. It is great that you guys want to work with the Latino community, but we need to understand too many points. So, because in my side, I cannot ask, it has social security number, it is IT, I cannot do that. But I can ask her, if with your permission, if your client, can I talk to your client? And then she say, yes, yes, please do it. So we make a phone call and we ended up, I, I was right. This customer was with the IT number. They qualify with those pre-qualifications, then I don't know how they take it, but she can buy the property because that was one attack of the loans, then they don't accept or they don't process uh, the IT loans. Then she was so embarrassing. She calls me and I say, and she said, you know, I didn't know this. And I said, that's great and you wanna help the Latino community, but I think you need to be more educated in all the programs that we have. And um, talking about marketing, talking about how the Latino community is growing, it is great, we are here, we're not going anywhere. So it is great to people to start understanding how they can help us in, in believe me, there is a lot of people, the second generation, that they don't need somebody that speaks Spanish. But in the same way, sometimes it is better to know their culture, to know how we can, because these people is gonna refer you to a cousin, to a, an uncle, or somebody else that probably doesn't have the same legal status that you have. And that's when the knowledge and everything that we understand about the Latino community is gonna take place. But, yeah. Thank you. Narrow, <laughs> narrow. And no notes, I mean, this woman is amazing, right? What a, what a presentation. And, um, and you know, when you're 70% when you're of the market for the next 20 years, you gotta, you gotta understand what that is. Very impressive, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.